we are obviously, quite obviously, in a delay. How many of you like delays? I don't. Let's talk about that. Matthew chapter 25, you know, we go back to this, it's, it's obviously apropos for today, the parable of the 10 virgins. I'm going to call them 10 bridesmaids. I'm even going to change that up just a little bit and kind of paraphrase it, and I hope you don't mind. There were 10 bridesmaids that were part of a bridal party. So this is a bridal party that is going to go to the wedding. And that wedding is going to take place at a distance. And so there's going to be a transport to that wedding. And so they get the word that it's time to go out, that the bus is going to be stopping to pick them up. And so they all head out to the bus stop. Now, the bus stop is quite large. It's not one of those open air bench type stops. It's more like what you might find at an airport, like out at our close airport. KCI, Kansas City International, and those are enclosures, so you can fit a lot of people in those bus stops as they wait for the bus to come and take them to their flight. So let's put that in our mind as the picture. So the entire bridal party, there are 10 given, but let's say the entire bridal party has been given the word, and the word is, it's time, that it's time, it's time to go and prepare yourself, get ready to go, go out to the bus stop and get ready because the bus is coming. And we all, we all saw that. We all talked about that. We, we, we preached on it. We taught on it. We looked uh, that the Passover season for 2022 had every indication that the Lord was calling us to the bus stop. And, but what happened? The bus didn't show up. The bus has been delayed. But you got to wait for the bus. I mean, the bus is going to take you. So you've got to be there ready for when the bus shows up. So you've gone out. You've gone to the bus stop. You've, you've with great anticipation, with, and, and all of us together have said, oh, it must be time. It's going to be a great thing. I hope I get to go. <laughs> so we've all gone out to the bus stop and we've hung out for a little while. And the bus has been delayed. We don't know why it's been delayed. Obviously, it's picking up people at other stops. Okay, so let's not interpret that too much here. But thinking about being out at the airport bus stop, it's going to make a, a long route that there are other things that that bus is going to be doing and other people is going to be picking up. I'm not talking rapture here. I'm talking the actual thing at KCI. Just It's a parable. It's a parable. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the bus has been delayed the bus to transport the bridal party has been delayed and we don't know why. And now there are a couple of options that can be taken. We can either leave the bus stop and go back home and wait for another call, go back about our lives and go do our thing. Or we can stay in the bus stop and wait. Now, the problem is, there are those who are so prepped and ready to go to this wedding that they have already gone to the ATM nearby and they have purchased, they've pulled out the, the cash necessary, they've gone to the ticket agent, they have purchased their tickets and they're ready to go. There are a group of others that are excited about, hey, this 
this could be the day of the rapture, but they haven't done what is necessary to purchase their ticket. Now, you interpret that however you want to interpret that. They're part of the bridal party. They are part of the bridal party that wants to go, is desirous of going, and yet they haven't done what is necessary to go to the ATM, pull out the cash, and buy their ticket. Now, they're all together, and they're thinking, all right, the ATM is just right over there. I can run over. When I see that bus coming, I can run over. We're all together. We're at the bus stop. We're inside the enclosure. We're we're out there. We're ready to go. But man, one day, two day, three day, four days, five days, six days have passed by. It's hard to wait that long. And so everybody gets sleepy. You got to rest. You just can't be alert. Let me put a parenthesis here as I see so many people on YouTube commenting, saying, I, I, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I've, I can't even sleep because I'm so ready to go. And yet delay, delay, delay. What's happening to you? You can't sleep you, because you are so amped up that you can't sleep. It's going to affect you. you. You need to rest. And so my parenthesis to you is we have rest in Jesus. We're ready to go. We've got our ticket purchased. Actually, Jesus purchased our ticket for us. We've made sure the ticket is there. It's stamped. <laughs> we. We have done the preparations necessary so that our ticket is valid and we are ready to go. And yet there are others who have gotten the idea, you know what, I can, when, the, when I see the bus really coming, when I see it really coming, I'll either run back to the bus stop and be ready to go, or I'll stick around in the bus stop. I'll keep, I'll keep listening to this crazy conductor here at the bus station saying it's time it's time it's time and yet i don't see any bus i'll hang around i'll go to church i'll listen to this crazy preacher i'll do what a you know I'll, I'll go there but when i see it happen then i'll get my life together i'll run to the atm i'll get my cash i'll get my ticket and i'll jump on the bus before it goes on because it takes a while for people to get on the bus so we all fall asleep we all go to sleep because we need to rest we do and even those who are eagerly awaiting the bus to show up need to need to rest. We need to rest in our spirit. We need to rest in our body. We can't be on high alert all the time in a physical sense. We can be high alert all the time in a spiritual sense, but you can't allow yourself to be on high alert physically all the time, listening for the trumpet as if it's going to be a physical sound. If you miss that physical sound, you don't get to get on the bus when it's actually a physical sound, but in our spirit, we're going to know. So you understand, you can't be on high alert in Spanish. We would say on pilas, um, it's a kind of a rough interpretation of batteries. You can't be on pilas all the time, batteries all the time. Just, I'm, I'm exaggerating here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm using the look of emotion just to try to convey this, but they all rested. But half of that crowd, half of those, that bridal party, half of those bridesmaids, five of the 10 virgins thought they were secure because everybody's been telling them that they're secure, but they have not stepped into intimacy. They have not stepped into a full grasp that the groom is coming. And so the whole group gets sleepy, has to physically rest. They kind of park on the benches and they lay their heads on the sides and they fall asleep for a little bit because they know the bus is coming. At least they hope the bus is coming. They think the bus is coming. They think they've got, they've heard the call to come out to the bus stop, but man, it's been delayed. It's delay, 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 delay. And here comes the bus around the corner. Finally, everybody wakes up. But that bus is trucking because that bus has been on delay and it's time. And so that bus driver is driving quickly. It's got a name tag on there, Michael. <laughs> He's there. He gets to the bus stop, honks the horn, get on. He opens all the doors and everybody who has a ticket is there. There are ticket agents, there's ticket people. There are, there are helpers of Michael there receiving the tickets come on get on get on get on get on get on the other guys have woken up the other 
half of the party that doesn't have their picket, uh, their ticket, pardon me. And they have looked over the ATM. Let us on with you. Let us be part of your ticket. They're yelling at us. We said, ah, it's my ticket. I can't share it with you. I won't have enough. I've got to, I've got to present this ticket. I can't, you can't have my ticket. Go buy your own ticket. The ATM's right over there. And so they run, they go and bus drives off. Yeah, rough interpretation of the parable, but I think that's what's happening. I have had a fervency in my own heart as far as my preaching. And those of you who are part of Freedom Church in St. Joseph, Missouri, have, uh, have noted that my preaching has been uh, with great fervor. That's not me. That is, it is, I guess it is partly because you can't separate yourself from yourself, even when you are preaching and, and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you, you know, you, you're still fervent in your own heart. And Paul talks about that fervency that he had. He had the, such a fervency for his own people to be saved, Israel, that he said, man, I would, I would gladly be condemned for all eternity if they would come to you. That's fervency of his own heart. And I think everybody that has been listening in the places where this has been being preached, either on YouTube or in churches, there are churches. I mean, we slam churches and we slam. Oh, I can't find any path. They're out there. There are, there are, I wish there were many, many more who were preaching that the bus is about to arrive and it is delayed. And I don't know why it's delayed, but it's for the right time and the right reason. It's out of God's mercy that any delay happens anyway. And many have heard and many have made sure their ticket is valid. They have checked their hearts. They have looked at themselves. They have reviewed themselves. They have looked that ticket over. They've looked over their heart. They have known and, be and believed and, and absolutely, absolutely are assured by the Holy Spirit himself bearing witness in their spirit that they're ready to go, that the, the ties that bind, if you can use an, an old saying and an old song, the ties that bind are cut. And that there's nothing left on this earth outside of love for people that really keeps us here. Love for people. Their ticket is ready to go and ready to be punched when that bus is coming to the bus stop. And yet there are others who, in that fervor, also got excited. And yet, because the delay has happened in their rest, they're dreaming of enhancing their life here. They're dreaming of, okay, the Lord hasn't come yet, and they've gone in their attention, in their dreams, in their desires. They've continued on where they were without their ticket being valid. They have not, they have not sought the Lord. I, I, can't, I can't make that picture any clearer. I don't know what the cutoff point is. I really don't. It's not me to judge. It's not for me to judge what the cutoff point is. It's for me to make sure that my heart is right. It's for you to make sure your heart is completely right with Jesus and that you're, you're in this intimacy and that word keeps popping up, keeps appearing in so many ways. I'm going to look at it from Romans chapter eight real quickly and show you three things and then we'll be done. I know this could actually be two videos, but I don't know that I have time for two videos. I don't know that the bus isn't going to pull in here and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm done. And so I'm going to, I'm going to look at Romans chapter eight for just a second, because there are three different um, entities or people or three different groanings that happen. It's a very important because I think this is a, is the explanation of intimacy that we should uh, maybe consider, okay? And he says in verse 18, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I was sharing with uh, my people on Sunday that really we haven't suffered. We haven't suffered. You think of believers suffering in parts of the world where their lives are at stake. We're suffering under the oppression and the weight of the spiritual battle, and that is very heavy. And I know it, we can get down, we can get... 
worn out. We need to rest in Jesus. We need to revive ourselves in the Holy Spirit, allow him to revive us might be a better way to say that and continue the fight. But we're under the kind of the weight that the spiritual weight, we see what's coming to the world. And it weighs us down. And so but still, whatever suffering any believer is suffering in this world is not worthy to be compared. Paul suffered. He suffered. It's not worthy to be compared to the glory that awaits us and will be revealed in us. Oh, that's a good, that'll preach. Verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. That's us. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. In other words, the promise of redemption was given at the very start. And so even creation was given the hope of redemption, and it has been delayed for all of creation, not just us. You know, I don't know how old you are. I'm 63. Not I kind of feel like, wow, 63. I don't feel 63. I feel like 60. Creation, 6,000 years. 6,000 years has been waiting. And it was the Lord that subjected them to the hope, them, it, not being a person, but creation itself had the hope, given the hope of redemption. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and, and labors with birth pangs together until now. Oh, my! And this is Paul's day. Paul wrote this inspired, of course, for his day, but inspired for our day as well. But imagine it is groaning. Now we are, we are seeing labor pains and then a pause, labor pains and a pause. It's not just long drawn out labor pains. Like it has been intensifying and getting more frequent. Now we're in, now we're in, we're in labor. We've gone from birth pangs to actual labor where it's boom, breath, boom, breath, contraction, breath, contraction. That baby, that man child, Revelation chapter 12. Enough of that word picture. Verse 23, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption this is the groaning of of the bride for the groom and you know i was a groom i wasn't a bride i was a groom i almost 42 years ago i remember that day it's like man let's get this thing going let's get it going I, mainly because it's just the thought of taking a lot of pictures and not being able to head off on the honeymoon it's making me crazy but we, we groaned for the day of our wedding. We had looked forward to that day. We had planned for that day. We had longed for that day. And, and the day was there, and yet it hadn't quite been accomplished yet with that ceremony and the covenant being made. And so we groaned with anticipation, groaned. And that's how we are right now. We are groaning within our spirit. There's a groaning for all who long for their Savior. I mean, a groaning that's causing us to put off everything else. No, I'm not going to go out and play basketball. No, I'm not going to go fishing. Just using illustrations for me here, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go start that business. I'm not going to go do those things. Anything that I do in this world, it's going to be with an eye upward, knowing that he is coming. And so I'm groaning, I'm groaning, and you're groaning. And I know many of you are just... Come on, Jesus, come for us, please. I long to see you. Many are saying, I long to be done with the world because we know that our redemption, our revelation as the sons of God will be complete. We will be freed from all sin, all sickness, all death. And many of us have experienced and are experiencing the grief that comes because of the death of a loved one. And so we groan, but mostly we groan as we have become more intimate with the groom, with the Lord Jesus Christ. We groan for him. So we 
groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting the adoption, the redemption of our body. Our spirits have been redeemed as we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Our souls are being sanctified as we have walked in the spirit. Read all of chapter 8. As we have walked in the spirit of God and put aside the deeds of the flesh. It doesn't mean you continue in them. In fact, you don't. You put to death the deeds of the flesh and you walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're looking for the redemption of our body, the completion of our redemption, the transformation, the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First mm -mm 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 -mm. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 through 55, particularly verse 53 and 54, this corruption must take on incorruption. This mortal must take on immortality. Transformation. Boom. In the twinkling of an eye, boom, trumpet sounds, we gone. We groan for that. Yes? I, I can't hear you, but yeah, right? Can I get an amen? I guess you can type it out in the comment. But I want you to continue on down to verse 26, because someone else is groaning. I want you to hear this. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Uh, part of our weakness is waiting. We don't like to wait. We need to persevere. We need to endure. Jesus said it, but the Spirit of God helps us endure. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Oh, are you there? Goodness. We don't know how to pray as we ought because, you know, as a pastor, I, I'm trying to do everything that I can to bring the word of God to people so that they're prepared. I guess I just uncovered my face. What a terrible mess that they're prepared. I also have to, I also have to work as if the Lord's coming is going to be delayed longer. In other words, I just can't give up the work of the ministry. I have to be led by the spirit. That's where I am right now to be led by the spirit as to know what to do next, where years ago I could have a five-year and a 10-year vision. It just seems impossible right now because we're moving from hour to hour, minute to minute, and the bus is delayed, but the bus is coming. So how do you prepare? Well, just understand this, that as we look to what God is doing in our life and we don't know how to pray, the Spirit of God gives us strength in that weakness of not knowing how to pray, and he helps us to pray. So we can continue to pray that the Lord's will be done. We can continue to pray that people's lives will, will come to a place of intimacy. That's how I'm praying, that we can pray for people to be saved. We can pray that people's lives would be shaken. Oh, that sounds like a terrible thing to pray, Pastor, but I'm praying that people's lives will be shaken out of, out of their carnality, I'm praying that my own life is shaken out of carnality, that we would see intimacy in people's lives, that they give up sinning, the continual life of disobedience and sin, even though they claim Jesus is Savior. And I know that's going to get into a debate about once saved, always saved, as opposed to living righteously once you are saved. I believe we are to live righteously, and the Spirit of God helps us to live righteously. Do we sin? Yes, we sin, but we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If we confess our sins, 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and beyond, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Continue on in the verse, in the passage, and it says, if we go on sinning, the love of God is not in us. However you want to interpret that, the fact is we can't go on sinning. Do we still sin? Yes, but do we purposely, rebelliously go on sinning? Please, please think. But the Spirit helps us in that weakness and knowing how to pray, knowing how to prepare. He helps us in that. But look. 
but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Spirit of God is groaning on our behalf. He's groaning for us. He's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is like Abraham sending Eliezer of Damascus. Eliezer actually means God's helper. We've done this in previous videos and others have done it too. It's just an amazing thing to think that Eliezer representing the Holy Spirit has been sent to prepare a bride. He's been sent to the family of Abraham to prepare a bride. And he finds Rebecca and, and he does everything necessary. Eliezer is bringing that bride into fruition for Isaac. The Spirit of God has been given to us to prepare us, and he's preparing the bride. He has been for 2,000 years. You don't think he is ready to present the bride to Jesus? He's groaning for us. He's groaning because he lives in us. He knows, and he creates, oh my goodness, he creates the groaning within us and the longing within us to be intimate with Jesus. He calls us when we are straying. He calls us when we're not looking towards intimacy with Jesus. He convicts us and says, come on, get in. And we either choose to ignore or to listen. And that's the state we're in. The Spirit of God is groaning. Come on. And he's, he's groaning, as it were, to the Father. Send the Son. I'm ready to go out. I'm ready not to come out of life, but to take the bride up. And the father's driving the bus and Jesus is standing at the door and the spirit of God is causing us to rise as he has helped us. The ticket has been purchased. It is now valid through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And now we present ourselves to Jesus and he br brings us onto the bus. We're caught up into the clouds with those who have died in Christ. We're caught up together with them in the clouds. Psalm 18, the Lord descends in a cloud. The Father comes to. Father's driving the cloud. He's riding on the cloud. And we meet Jesus in the cloud. We meet our dead in Christ, loved ones, brothers and sisters in the cloud, in the air. We'll meet. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. John 14. He takes us to Father's house where many rooms have been prepared. And there we celebrate. We celebrate the cup of redemption. We celebrate the cup of consummation from the wedding feast of the Last Supper, the wedding ceremony, the wedding cups of the Last Supper that were taken. The picture that Jesus said, I'm not going to take of the fruit of the vine again until we do it together in the kingdom of heaven. Father's house. Check your ticket. Check your heart. If you're listening to this, you've probably already done that. I'm finding that fewer and fewer are actually checking their heart now. Then they are not really interested in hearing this. But I say it anyway, just in case someone is watching. Check your ticket. Check your heart. Make sure it's cleaned then you're not tied to this world in any way other than loving people in Jesus and loving your families, doing what you're supposed to do. Check your ticket to make sure you are clean in Jesus. The bus is going to come up. Rest in him. Rest in him. If you're waiting till the last moment to go purchase your ticket, my friend, that bus is going to come up so suddenly you're not going to have time in the moment to go get your ticket. Come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus now. For those of you who are ready and you're weary, rest in Jesus. You're not going to miss it. Rest. Take a deep breath. Just about the time you take that deep breath and rest in your spirit, and let that air out. It might be when the trumpet actually sounds and you fly rested and ready to go. Because even in the battle, we're promised rest. Even in the oppressive spirit of the world upon us, we are called to be of good courage. That, that, that really does mean joyful. And how, do, how are you joyful if you're weary? Don't be weary in your soul. 
if you're weary, burden down. Make sure your yoke is with Jesus because he will give you rest. That's the promise. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. That's the promise. Get in there. Yoke yourself. Be at rest. Be at peace. Even with the burden, be at peace. All right. Enough of the bus story. God bless you all. Love you. Praying for you. I know you're praying for us. And that's what makes this all work. The bus is coming. Mm -hmm.